I've tried plenty of NAS operating systems on this channel, from TrueNAS, Unraid, Open Media Vault, and pretty much all the off-the-shelf solutions. There's one that I haven't quite tried yet, and that's Houston UI from 45 Drives. Houston UI is a server operating system that is obviously geared towards NAS operation. It's essentially a cockpit with some custom additions from the 45 Drives team. And it's a little different from other systems in that you first install Rocky Linux or Ubuntu, and then install Houston on top of that. And Houston isn't a crazy operating system like all the off-the-shelf solutions where they have like a whole app store and you can pretty much install whatever type of app or service you want. And it's not as intuitive or have all the features and as easy to use as Unraid. I'd put it more in line with TrueNAS and it kind of makes sense. They both use ZFS. Now, instead of me just sitting here and talking about it, how about we go take a look? That was cool. So this is it. This is Houston UI. This is what you get from the overview page. From here, you can drill down into a bit more detail. For example, if you want to see usage and you want to see that historically, you can click down in here. And as you can see, I haven't been using much at all because I honestly wiped this a few days ago. So yeah, this is a clean slate. Now, like I mentioned, Houston is essentially built on top of cockpit. So I'm not going to go through the entire spiel here. If you want to see a cockpit review, go, go look that up. So one of the things I really want to focus on is the dedicated 45 drives sections they have over here. And the first one being disks. This is where you get to see the actual disks in your 45 drive system. So if you don't have a 45 drive system, you won't get to use these features. So I have an HL 15 and that is compatible. So in here we get to see the exact drives that are loaded in the exact bays physically in my HL 15. So I can click through here and see the exact drives and some specs on them, which is pretty freaking cool. And you may have noticed when I clicked over here, it highlighted here and it had the animations. Now this is the ZFS animation, which tells you which other drives are in the same pool as that disc. Pretty freaking sweet. And it'll tell you down here exactly which VDEV it's in. I have to say these 45 drives custom sections are actually pretty freaking cool and useful. So moving on, we have the motherboard section, which after a brief loading period to get all the hardware information, we get an overview of the motherboard and you can kind of hover over certain things and it'll give you some information. So on the PCI slots, it'll tell you if it's available and what speed it's running at and the other information about it. So here it's available, it's open. And here you'll see though that we have our Connect X3 and it does show us that it is a network card and it's up and some information about it. Uh, but it doesn't show, I guess, exactly what type of card it is or the model, I don't think. But still pretty useful. And all the other ones are unpopulated. Then hovering down over here over the SATA drives, that will tell you if something is connected. The RAM, it'll tell you if the slot is populated and by the size of the DIM that are in there. So you can see here, it even tells us that they're Samsung DIMMs, 16 gigabytes each. I do wish though, uh, you could see a bit more information and even it would be cool if you can hover over like the fan ports and control the fan curves and stuff from here. That would be pretty freaking sweet. If you could hover over like the power inputs and see what type of power usage you're, you're pulling in, it would also be kind of cool, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of just spitballing here. Moving on to the 45 drive system. This just gives you an overview of your entire system. So you can see I'm running the HL15. Here's all my PCI slots and even my M.2 slot. What processor I'm using, the RAM, all my network stuff and IPMI. So yeah, like I mentioned, these are some pretty useful little sections over here. But if you're installing Houston and you're using a 45 drive system, you're probably using it as a NAS and you're probably using ZFS. So let's head into the ZFS tab and you're welcome for waking you up just now. So this is where you'll obviously manage all of your ZFS pools. And like you can see, I have one here and all that is, is a mirror of one of the, I think six hard drives I have, or actually two of the six hard drives I have, cause it's a mirror, duh. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and create one to show you how this is all done. And I'll kind of walk through the nuances here. So we'll do is we'll give it another name, test two. Here is where you can pick 
the ZFS type you want to do, RAID Z1, RAID Z2, RAID Z3, mirror, or just a plain old disk. So we'll do RAID Z1, and from here, you can select the disks you want to use. So we're going to go ahead and select the rest of our six terabyte drives, which is four of them. You can adjust some of these settings down here, and if you're familiar with ZFS, you may know what these settings are, but some people that aren't, it would be nice to have some tool tips here to tell you kind of what they do, kind of like you have up here, but, you know, food for thought. So I'm just going to leave everything as is. Go ahead and create. And just like that, our pool is created. Easy peasy. Wouldn't expect anything less. Where we get into some interesting things here that if you're familiar with TrueNAS, if you wanted to add like a cache drive or a separate virtual pool, then you notice that that wasn't really available in the creation. What you actually have to do is go into status of the pool you just created. Go over here to these three buttons and click add virtual device. And from here, it's going to give you another similar kind of pop-up window. And from there, you can see here we have the different types of caching. Or in this case, we'll use a special VDEV. And I can select two of my enterprise Intel SATA drives. Then we'll say these are special, mirror them, and add. And just like that, it's created. Now, once you know how to do this, it's not bad or anything, but... It took me a lot longer than I care to admit to figure that out. So not super intuitive for a newbie. And now if you're creating ZFS pools and you're buying an ass, you obviously want to share that across your network. So one would think you would just go to file sharing down here and you can certainly do that, but you can also create the shares directly in this ZFS interface. And there are some pros and cons to each. So let's look at the ZFS way. So in here, we can go into file systems, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file system, and we're going to call this one share2. And you can see down here, yes, we want an NFS share, and uh, yes, we want a Samba share. So just like that, we have Samba and NFS enabled. Click create, and I've experienced this bug where when I do that, it shows it twice, but if I refresh, it goes back to normal. So there you go. But over here, you can see these shares listed as NFS and SMB. Now, here's the weird thing about doing it this way. Now, when I do NFS, I'm used to having just the permissions based on the file system itself. But when I do SMB shares in my home lab, I usually just set the Samba users direct access to that share. So in here, you can't really do it like that. So if you go into configure Samba share, the only options you really get are these. Now, if you go into additional, you can probably custom set the allowed users and say like valid users equals raid owl and set it like that. But that requires a bit more knowledge on Samba itself. And if you're using this, you may have that. But if you don't, then, you know, that's something I fully expect to see in the GUI, especially when it comes to network sharing is allowed users and permissions. So if you don't do it that way, you can just set the permissions on the file system itself. But, you know, it's it's up to you. Which one's best practice? I honestly don't know. So another way you can do it is going into the file sharing section. And from here, you can just simply go down to shares, create a share name, uh, mirrors test two, I guess. Now here's another qualm I kind of have with Houston or cockpit itself is that when it asks you to specify a path, I'm used to, like in TrueNAS, it giving you like a file or folder drop down where I can select, you know, I can go through all my file systems, my pools, and just select it. Uh, you, you can't do that here. It doesn't do it. You have to manually set it, which I think is mount. Actually, it might just be in the root directory. Okay, it is. So there it is. So it's a list uh, test two, share two. There it is. So. We'd go into test two slash share two. And here we can select our valid users that we want. And what I'll do is I'll actually create the share three location, create it now, which is pretty cool. Any valid groups if you want to do it by group. Information on the Samba share and click confirm. So theoretically, now I should be able to go to the share. Let's start with share two first, where I set it in the ZFS section. 
Okay, we're in. But can I create anything? We should have full access. We don't, okay. And this is because we don't have access to the file system itself. And if I had to guess, we're probably going to have that same fate on share three. It's called test three. As you can tell, this isn't scripted. Okay, we're in. Can we create a folder? No, we don't have access via the file system. So what we'd have to do is go back in the ZFS, go to one of our shares, edit permissions, uh, right owl, be the owner, give it all the permissions, update. Now let's try this again. We're in. Neat. So yeah, uh, if you wanna do it that way, you have to set permissions and the allowed users. Honestly, it's probably easier to just set the permissions and set them to the specific users you wanna have access to and just don't worry about the, uh, the Samba stuff. So theoretically, I could remove this and all users technically have access, but only the ones that have file or file system access can get to it. So technically I shouldn't need that and I should still be able to do this. Yes. So yeah, not overly intuitive, but again, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. And one thing I do have to mention is that if you find yourself in this situation, you're wondering why you can't connect, you probably didn't go into identities, go into that specific account. So in users, Raid Owl, and you have to explicitly set your Samba password. So make sure you do that. So moving on, uh, one of the other big features of ZFS is obviously snapshots. So what you can do is go to snapshots here and you can create a manual snapshot if you want, but that's lame as hell. No one's creating manual snapshots. What you wanna do is create automated snapshots. So we're gonna go into file systems and select the file system that we want to create a replication of go into the three dots, go into configure replication task. And here you have some information, some attributes you can set. The big one is the source plan. So this is where you set the retention time and the interval time. So how long do you wanna keep these snapshots for? For example, maybe we wanna keep these for one week. And how often do you wanna run them? These will say will run every day. And what's cool is that we can also just add another one. So if you want snapshots on this interval, you can have it. Then you can also have another one. Maybe you wanna keep certain ones for longer. So we can say, you know what? Let's keep these for six months. And those ones we are just running once every week. And then you can figure that. And you know, maybe you want a super uh, granular one that runs like, you know, every 10 seconds and we only keep that for one minute. Uh, how about two minutes? So maybe I have enough time to show you guys. And configure. We'll go into snapshots. We'll give it 10 seconds and hopefully we see a snapshot. Oh yeah, I forgot this one step. So in here, it mentions that you have to restart the Z nap Z end. That's probably not what it's actually called or how it's pronounced, but that's the service you have to restart. So if we go back in here and we go to services, the nap, ZN, there it is. Start and enable. So that wasn't even running in the first place, but you'll have to restart this. And now we go back to ZFS. Okay, I'm an idiot. I uh, did this backwards. So you probably were screaming at the screen when I was doing this. So we want to keep these for two minutes. <laughs> oh, Lordy. And uh, the interval is 10 seconds. So yeah, these are right, this one was wrong. So that makes sense. Yep, three, four, four snapshots and we can go into these. We can pick one, we can clone it, we can rename it, we can roll back to it and we can destroy it. So yeah, that's how snapshots are managed in Houston UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and eh, I'll leave it, who cares? It's not taking up any space because I'm not using it whatever. But yeah, um, it works. You know, you can obviously go into the CLI and do a lot of things that aren't necessarily available in the GUI. One of those being that you can't really specify the time you want it to start, right? So I'd like to be able to say, yeah, you know, this runs once uh, or once every day and holds it for a week, but what time of the day is it going to run? Probably from the time that you created it, but 
you know, that's, uh, I'd like to be able to set that. So like I said, a lot of the stuff you can do in the CLI, but if you're going to have a GUI for things, then I'd like to have a GUI for all the things and be able to set all the things that I want to be able to do. So maybe I'm just being a baby back bitch. But yeah, the rest is essentially just cockpit. Uh, one of the other things that's pretty cool in here is that in benchmarks, you can use an FIO benchmark directly in the GUI, which is pretty cool. So if you're not familiar with FIO, it's just a disk benchmark. You can set max throughput, IOPS, or performance. So if you want to do IOPS, set the file size, uh, the runtime, test path. So maybe we do it on test uh test to slash share to i don't know launch and cool here's our results uh you can download the report check it out if you want but yeah a really nice feature to have especially on a nas operating system and a few last last things i want to cover are uh networking over here obviously you can set your networking preferences add you know uh, interfaces bridges all that good stuff so i've gone in here and statically set some connections um i'm using a connect x3 for 40 gigs so i had to go in here and set these weird static ips with a weird subnet but that is going to change very soon so make sure you're subscribed so you can see my new setup and one thing that I really like seeing in here is a file explorer. Very convenient. I can just from the GUI go in here and see what's in these folders. Fantastic. Thank you for implementing that. And that's kind of it. So yeah. So overall, what do I think of Houston UI? Well, it's a decent operating system and it's open source. So that's also some bonus points. One problem I did have though, was that the installation process was a bit rocky, no pun intended. And I know that the folks over at 45 Drives know this, but I also know that their bandwidth is focused on some other projects right now, but honestly, that's no excuse. And I'm hoping that we can see some updates to the installation process that offer a much more seamless installation. But the final verdict is that the operating system gets the job done. If I'm looking for a NAS operating system and I want to use ZFS and I want to set up shares and snapshots and all the good things that come with a NAS and ZFS, then it works. And especially for the people who are ordering straight from 45 drives, get their hardware and use Houston with the support of 45 drives, then yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Now, is this going to replace true NAS for me? No. I mean, it's not saying it can't. True NAS isn't perfect, but until I see some more consistent updates from the 45 Drives team on Houston, then I'll probably just stick with TrueNAS. But who knows, my Home Lab 2024 video may just surprise you. We'll see. But that's all I have for you today. I suggest you go out there and try Houston UI for yourself and let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video, then go ahead and drop a like. If you want to see more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons, you guys are my fully open source, custom ZFS NAS OS with all the bells and whistles. You guys are great. And if you're still watching, you're Open Media Vault. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.